Farmers use one word to sum up this year's corn harvest in Central Texas. Mostly frustration. Great hopes have turned to high emotions as farmers bring in this year's crop. The problem is definitive, the answer elusive. Aflatoxin shows up somewhere in Texas most every year, and this year farmers in the heart of the Lone Star State are taking their turn, with aflatoxin levels as high as 2,500 parts per billion. The overall highs are, are worse. We always had some that would go in the 100 to 200 range, maybe even go up toward 300, but very few went over 300. This year, depending on who tests it and how they test it and everything, a lot of them are going over 300. Aflatoxin is a toxin produced by a fungus that grows on corn during periods of hot, dry, and humid weather. Texas state chemist regulations allow for corn testing up to 20 parts per billion to be used for human consumption and up to 300 parts per billion depending upon the animal. Cortez says it's probably the most extreme year he's seen. He's not alone. Man, to pull a plow through a field that's making 70, 80 bushels, that makes you sick to just watch it go down. Farmers turn to their crop insurance if tests are too high, but it gets tricky there as well. Plus, farmers can't make a living off of crop insurance. If they zero out a field, you can collect the money on that. You know, it's probably not going to be enough. You know, it's not going to be like being able to harvest a good crop and getting to sell it for a decent price. Aflatoxin-generated losses exceed 14 million annually for Texas corn producers. Some farmers are even contemplating the thought of not growing a single acre of corn within the next few years, choosing instead to shift to small grains. As this year's Central Texas harvest nears completion, answers to fighting the fungus are elusive. Obviously, it'd be great if we had a fungicide that would resolve this problem, but right now there's not one economically uh, affordable, nor is it uh, consistent enough that you get enough impact. Environmental factors can affect fungicide performance, and such products have shown mixed results in trials. Aaron and other extension agents in the area are working with Dr. Thomas Isaacy, an extension plant pathologist at Texas A&M University, to see if there is a difference in aflatoxin levels in various corn varieties on a county-by-county -county basis. If there's science behind it and a scientific answer, that's what the county agents want to do, and that's our role in this, is to find out the science if it's there and then get that into the hands of our growers. We don't want to be out of the corn business. The other issue is testing. Results are varying across the area depending upon who tests it. The test itself is fairly standard. The variability comes from the different methods used to gain a sample. According to Isaac Keyes, sampling variability can be reduced by increasing sampling size or increasing numbers of sampling units. The disadvantages with increasing sampling size are increased cost and increased time, the latter being the most important as time is money in farming. The biggest problem is it slows the process down, slows harvesting down, uh, and as the guys in South Texas can tell you, when you get slowed down and you, you end up with a storm, then worse things can happen. Tests at grain elevators are only between the grower and the buyer. If the corn needs to be tested for insurance purposes, a sample is taken to an approved facility. This leaves another opportunity for variability. Farmers can only hope answers come sooner than later as the fight against aflatoxin continues. Well, I wish I'd come up with it. I could farm for just the fun of it then because if I could figure out how to get rid of that aflatoxin, that'd be great. For TFB News, Matt Felder, Central Texas.